As you look at the various sectors you're, you're supporting, and we were primarily focused on startups, are there any particular segments within technology, besides the obvious healthcare and you know, perhaps uh, energy and so on and so forth, that you see particular traction these days that uh, you're getting either from a funding standpoint, governmental funding, et cetera, or just that seem to be catching hold faster than others as they ramp up from startups? I think I, I would like to start that. The education is um, is definitely one. I'm finding that um, uh, we are at a perfect time. I think working with uh, STEM education uh, in Georgia, as there's stimulus money coming into uh, Georgia, I'm I'm also finding that there are a lot of folks out there looking to. Uh, use those resources and are going to be using those resources, it's very important now for us to use those uh, in a, an effective community way. Um, so I think you'll find from the uh, Board of Regents uh, to the uh, Department of Education in Georgia to a lot of uh, businesses and nonprofits, there's a lot of opportunities to um, make an impact on the education community that will drive all of our businesses down the road and will actually take away our ability to have a business somewhere down the road if we don't act accordingly. I will mention that, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think in general the Georgia um, early stage technologies uh, scene is pretty, pretty diverse and that there are, you know, a lot of opportunities across the board. You, you start to see a couple of spikes and traditionally and it's still a strength. You still are seeing a lot of uh, security-based companies. And I think recently we were starting to see a little bit more of companies that are really relying upon the, um, the internet infrastructure as a part of their business model. And what's very interesting about that is just the, the, the lack of capital intensity for these models. So um, businesses where you can get a lot further in customer traction with a lot less dollars, which is pretty attractive given the dynamics that we're seeing right now. Um, and, and in those areas, we're seeing um, kind of a um, blip in terms of maybe social media uh, type of opportunities and digital media opportunities. I, th I think we see technology all over the place, but what we're focusing on is really business process uh, software applications of some sort. So, you know, even if you simplify that and maybe say a Salesforce.com or a SharePoint, those types of things I think can readily enhance uh, saving dollars on customer, uh, trying to get customers, uh, trying to speed up your operations in the back background so you can, you know, your, your business would be more streamlined. So just business process streamlining whatever applications would do that. To get a little more granule, uh, security software companies are continuing to do well here. We are probably the security software capital of the U.S. Uh, if you look at uh, somewhat in the wireless area, we still have a lot of innovation going there. I'm still waiting to still find a killer app, and once we find it, then you, you'll get funded, but nobody can tell what it is yet. Uh, and uh, Charles mentioned the whole media area, digital media is really taking off, including gaming and so on. There are two or three gaming companies that have gotten really some trap in, in the last probably six months. Uh, in, in addition, you have a company here in town called Caneva in the virtual world. And so while social media it goes a little bit beyond that, uh, and then the whole media area, we. Uh, they some company, one or two, that have come out of Turner. You know, you now have Tyler Perry and his studio here. So the whole media thing is something that I think you're going to see a lot more coming out in the way of technology of young companies. Um, I think sometimes I get confused between alliance, partnership, consultant relationship. And in my mind, if, if, if this is correct, a consultant relationship is more short-term, more immediate benefit back and forth, whereas an alliance is longer-term, you know, the, the goodies are at the back, further down the line. 
but how do you structure, how do you compensate those who help you, your board of advi your advisory team? Um, because as a, an entrepreneur, we have a business for over, over 20 years, but as a launching a new business, we're kind of at a loss on, on how we compensate those that we've asked to serve on our board of advisors. And finally, how do you structure the compensation for the software development company that may be doing it on the come? I got uh, scolded by a partner of a large law firm as giving away equity at this stage, says it completely hampers you, do not give away equity. Um, anyway, there's just very little guidance, I think, for an entrepreneur trying to put together a deal. <laughs> Well, they probably are very well guidance. But as far as your board of advisors, the traditional way that young companies do it is to grant slot options to the board of advisor member. The company doesn't have money to pay them. And so you, you give them, the, generally it would come out of the option pool that you have created, that you would give them what are called non-qualified options because they are not employees. But that is generally what board of advisors are looking for. Now, as far as trying to do software development companies, that is a give and take negotiation company by company. I, I have companies that have paid them. I have had companies that have paid part now, part later. I have had companies that have given some equity. Uh, it, it depends on how you can value the equity and what, how much equity you're talking about. You know, you don't want to give away 25% of your company to a software developer, that not that is not good business. But you know, if you can negotiate a reasonable price for the software, maybe part cash, part equity. I think you have to look at it on a case by case. I would add that I think in in my experience, what I've seen companies do with advisors is that they will <clears throat> look at the amount of equity that they might issue to a. Um, kind of a mid-level employee and say that amount, if it's a couple of percentage or whatever, is what I want to have available for all of my advisors. And, um, and also, I've seen best practices in the area of really tying the vesting of those options to actual performance milestones. So that, you know, as the relationship matures, value is delivered, you, then, you know, you can make sure there's a, a fair, fair trade-off.